Hi, in this episode I'm here to talk about spools and reels. In getting this right, not only will you save money, but you'll look cooler and you'll have the right kit for the right kind of diving that you want to do. Hi, I'm Andy the Northern Diver. Welcome to another video in this series of scuba diving tutorials where I'm going to be talking to you about finger spools and ratchet reels. If this is your first time here and you want to improve some of your setup and your technique, then click the subscribe button. And while you're at it, hit the bell while you're there. That way you get informed of any new videos that we post. If you haven't got a YouTube account, I'll post a link on how you go about setting one up just up here. And make sure you stick around to the end where I'll be giving you my top tips. So generally speaking, we've got two types of, of reel or spool available to us as divers. So first of all, we've got the ratchet reel and then we've got the finger spool. So what I've noticed then, most beginners start with a ratchet reel. I think this is because more experienced divers just go, I don't want this anymore. So they, they make them really cheaply available and certainly at dive clubs they'll be like, oh, I've got a reel you can have, gives you 20 quid and it costs them about 50 quid so they've lost a fortune. Why not save some money and just not buy it in the first place? Because you're gonna end up with a finger spool. But that said, they're a good piece of kit. They build confidence in new divers by having the ratchet mechanism. So the way that works then, you've got that line going up to the surface with your marker boy at the end and inside the handle we've got a little t-bar that we pull up and down you see that so by pulling on the t-bar it allows us to decant string let go of it string doesn't come out you can hear the ratchet mechanism working now or you can pull it in and freely reel in until the point that your string is nice and tight if you want to let it go just pull on the t-bar and it releases certainly for a new diver that's perhaps a little inexperienced when it comes to holding a reel and it's dangling from the surface so your marker boy's at the top you can let go of it and it should just float in front of you like so however if you don't learn you're never going to progress as a scuba diver we should always be trying to progress and be a better diver than we are in my view i believe simplifying your kit and making it all com more compact and more streamlined makes you a better diver so in doing so i think you need to buy a finger spool not only is it smaller and simpler but it's lighter and it's easier so assuming that you've got on top of your buoyancy and trim which all new divers should do but very very rarely do so get on top of that number one go out and get yourself a finger spool they're cheap on ebay you can buy a 40 meter spool for about 20 quid it comes from china same place as all of them do but there's no logo on it which is going to wear off anyway so no one will know that it's not a particular brand they come in loads of colors get a nice bright color no one's going to steal my pink reel because it's pink are they so not only is a finger spool smaller and lighter and more compact it can carry just as much line so there's a there's a 40 meter line on there and being smaller and more compact it makes it easier to carry several of these should you be entering a cave complex or doing some wreck penetration or even setting out a distance line on the seabed of where you've gone or where you're going to and i've got myself on a bolt snap double ender someone call them a piston clip we call them bolt snaps around here so what you should always do is try and keep that bolt snap on here so that stays on the line all the time and, and clearly being heavy will always come down the line and to keep it tight we use the bolt snap if you look at the spool you can get your thumb in there if you need to. Now imagine I had a whopping great big pair of gloves on. How easy is that going to be? Because that hole's nice and big. To secure it, you can see there's holes all the way around the actual spool. So you get the bolt snap, put a twist in, and pull it tight to the point that it, you can clip it on. So it's just clipped on with that twist around there. And then you get the, the string and wrap that around a couple of times. So there we've got it nice and secure. So whichever you choose, get the longest one possible. So rather than buying a 20 metre one for 15 quid, spend 20 quid and get a 40 metre one. That way it, you can always use it at that length. Whereas if you buy a 20 metre one, you can use it up to 20 metres, but you can't use it any further. Whereas a 40 metre one, you can use the 20 metres and to 40 metres, save money. So my top tip then would be unpay all that line, whichever spool or reel you buy, pull it all off, get it all on a big bundle on the floor and get to the end of it and make sure it's tied on. Because if it's not tied on, you've lost your spool if you drop it. And quite often we do drop them. So if it's tied on, you'll be fine. Leave me a comment below then. Tell me what kind of reel or spool you buy or you use. Any questions or comments you've got, put them in the bottom and, and I'll be sure to get back to you and give you a thumbs up. Thanks. Make sure you watch the rest of the videos in this series to catch up with all things scuba diving. The link is posted above. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one. See you on Insta.